second, everyone, I wanted to add planner accessories and tools to my favorites videos. This will probably be a one-off unless I um, drastically change how I journal and all of that. But uh, <laughs> I tend to be a fairly minimal planner and a minimal bullet journal person. So the tools that I use are not many, but they are tried and true and I use them again and again and again. So I figured I would go ahead and go through that. And like I said, this will probably be the only favorites for planning uh, for quite some time, unless I drastically change things. So I also have a few things off camera to show you, and I'm also gonna show you um, some of my journals, and I have some sneak peeks of 2021 planners, so <laughs> I will show those to you as well. But I wanted to go ahead and show you sort of the basics, and some of this will be a duplication of some things that I've talked about in my everyday carry journal, which includes my Jaboon Techo and my uh, Naname Cafe Notes bullet journal. I'll put a link to that video below where I go through that setup. So some of these things you will see again, but uh, some are additions or not necessarily additions, just things that you've never seen because they're not part of that actual setup. So usually though, I do like to keep pretty much all of my planner stuff together. So this is my everyday carry currently for 2020, uh, for 2020. Things are gonna change a little bit for 2021. But uh, one of the things, and I'll show you the things that are on here that I, I was not able to find examples of separately from my setup here that are my favorites. So pen loops. Um, these little stick-on pen loops are really, really great because I like to have all of my writing materials or my writing tools together with my planner. I don't want to have, I don't want to be carrying around a separate uh, pen case for when I'm journaling and planning on the go, which lately is not as often as it used to be. But these little pen loops, so I put one on my Jaboon Techo. I just got these off of Amazon. There's a variety of different companies that sell these little um, elastic pen loops. It's just elastic and then it has, um, a, oop, oh, because I have my Ollie clip, which is another one of my favorites, which I'll show you here in a minute, as long as I don't lose my Ollie clip. There we go. Um, so, so this is just, there's a little sticky back and then you peel that off and you just put it wherever you want it. Uh, this, I, like I said, I got from Amazon. It was part of a multicolor pack. So I will see if I can find this particular one, but if not, I'll find a similar one um, that I can link you to below on Amazon. Uh, Loikstrom also sells, uh, I think, pretty much uh, pen loops to match pretty much every color of notebook that they have, but they're, just FYI, their pen loops are really, really narrow. So if you want to fit a fountain pen, like a broader fountain pen in them, it's gonna be a lot harder. These, that uh, the ones that I found on Amazon, are pretty good for just about any pen. I've been able to fit any pen I've tried in here because it is pretty elastic. The elastic on the Leuchtstrom one is ones are pretty, the elastic is pretty tight is what I mean to say um, and here it's a little more flexible and I can fit just about anything in there so the other thing that I don't have on the table that I wanted to show you is these little tabs from Midori and I'll go ahead and take this one out but I don't want to lose my place there so uh, these come on a little um, cardboard packaging dealio i don't know what you want to call it but they come in a silver color and this i think is the copper color and it's already discolored a little bit as you can see which i kind of like you get some patina but these little tabs are great they're not obtrusive so basically you can just add this to the side of your page here um make sure i don't have two pages and it will mark it very well. And they don't fall off. That's a really good thing about these. A lot of little page markers that I've tried. Um, actually, I'll show you. It's in my drawer here. I just saw one. Um, a lot of people use these. Oh my God, it's so tiny. I can't get it out of my drawer here. Hold on a second. Okay, here we go. So um, a lot of people use these little book markers and these I find, well, first off, they don't stick up on the page. So if you put them on the page, 
they don't stick up. They just stick on the side or, or you, you know, you can put it on the top or the side, wherever you'd like. But I find that these often slip off very, very easily. These Midori ones do not. They stay put. Uh, sometimes if I'm taking books in and out of the elastics in a traveler's notebook, sometimes they will catch on the elastic and they'll get a little askew. But for the most part, they're not going anywhere. I mean, I have to put some pretty good pressure on it to get it to come off there. Um, I like them because they're unobtrusive, they stay put, and they don't slide around on the page, and they're just really good. They don't have a labeling area, obviously, so these are good if you just have pages to mark that you kind of already know what, what's on those pages. Like for me, I in my bullet journal, I put these in different places along the... Um, the paper here so I kind of know which one's which based on where it is but it's you're, you're not gonna be able to label them but they are nice and slim and they don't get in the way of uh, pens in here it, it's it, like I said it's pretty non obtrusive which is why I like it and you won't see any fountain pens on the table just because um, for my everyday carry, really the only fountain pen that I've been using lately, although well, that's that's going to change a little bit, is this uh, Lamy 2000, but I don't use it in my calendar planning in my Jaboon Techo. For that, I use um, one of these pens, and I'll, I'll go into that. But fountain pens are kind of an addition to this, like I will use some fountain pens occasionally, but, um, but, I'll, but I'll show you how I'm using these other pens and what they are. So, and fountain pens also, I have a separate favorites video for those, so I kind of wanted to keep that separate. Oh, and before I put this away, I wanted to show you the Ollie clips. So I find the Ollie clips really great because they are super, super um, magnetic. So, um, whoa, <laughs> they will do that sometimes because they are super magnetic. And I find it really handy to mark my place here. Um, this is just at the beginning, but uh, it's also really good for putting pictures or little notes up in here because this will hold a lot. It'll hold a lot of pages together because it is so magnetic. But I keep it there just in case I want to slide something under it or mark a page um, or mark several pages together because with this, you really could, I mean, I mean, you you could you could put even more pages together than that. It's really super strong. So um, that's that for what I wanted to show you that's in here. So I'm gonna go on to the things that are on the table here. And uh, as far as planning goes, what I generally use um, to mark events or dates or things that I wanna keep track of are these really handy dandy little stamps. So on the other side of these long wooden dowel-like shapes, there is a rubber stamp. So for example, like this one is for yoga to mark on days that I've done yoga. Um, probably the most common ones that I use, like I use this little dollar sign to mark a payday on my calendar. Uh, there's a little flag that says day off, so I'll mark days off with that. Um, there's a little um, injection thing here, so I use that for uh, a migraine injection that I take every month, so I mark that on my calendar. And then there's a cake which I use for birthdays. So there's just a variety of things. And I even have one for trash and recycling. Um, I'll put a link to this shop down below. I think it's Japan Stamp is the name of it on Etsy. Uh, but the problem is shipping does not seem to be uh, inexpensive these days because these are direct from Japan. So I'm gonna put a link down below to their Etsy shop, but just know that if you get them now, the the shipping is going to be really really high and i don't think it's really going to be economical for you unless you're um make placing a very large order or uh, if there's if they just have something that you really can't get anywhere else but there are some other companies that or uh, small shops that sell things like this on etsy so i would say browse through there there there's also companies that sell stickers that do that serve the same purpose I kind of like the stamps because they're reusable. And uh, Cool Japan Stamp also had this little box to put these in, which I thought was really cute. It's got a design on one end, and then on the other side, it has this little label um, pattern here. But uh, but I really, really like these, but I you might wanna wait until shipping prices from Japan 
go back down. Now, as far as stamp pads for using those stamps, I really prefer these Versamagic multi-surface chalk ink by Dewdrop. So these, this company makes a, a variety of different types of stamps. This is the one you want for actual planner pages that will not leak through to the other side of the page because some of the, um, some of the other kinds that they have will leak through the page. I know this because I have tried other kinds and uh, have had the ink leak, leak through the page. And sometimes different colors will do that. Um, I've kind of found the right combination with these. Like I'll mark red for uh, doctor's appointments or things that are, um, or like the birthday cake, you know, th things that I kind of want to call my attention to. Um, very strongly. Uh, I'll use the green for like the dollar sign and things like that, but the majority of, or, or the uh, recycling <laughs> stamp, but the majority of things I am stamping with this black Versa Magic um, stamp pad. And these little dew drops, you can get them on, um, I think you can get them on Amazon, but you can also get them on Jet Pens. Those are the two main places that I purchased them from. I will uh, see what I can find and put a link down below. And I have this Ranger Archival ink stamp pad out because I've had a lot of questions about what ink I use for my watercolor swatches. So this is not really related to my planners per se, but since I was talking about stamp pads, I did want to show you the uh, archival permanent waterproof ink pad that I generally am using when I need a waterproof ink. If you are gonna be doing watercoloring in your planner, this would be great if you want to do combined stamps and watercolor. It's not going to come off. I would be care a little bit careful about possible bleed through. I have not actually used this on my planner, so I don't know. On watercolor paper, it's obviously fine. It's not going to bleed through. But uh, for lighter papers, I would definitely do a test before doing um, a whole lot of stamping with this. But I just did want to show you that. This is the Ranger Archival Ink in Jet Black. And I'll put a link below to that, probably on Amazon, because I think that's where I got that. Okay, so that's the stamping. I'm going to put those off to the side here. So, uh, and I'll talk about the pens towards the end. So for planning and my actual Jaboon Techo, this stencil has been the most useful to me. This is by Jaboon. Uh, it's it's for made specifically for the Jaboon Techo. It has a little uh, dial here for time. You could use this for a variety of things, I suppose. It has a little circle template that I use to put around that clock, obviously. Um, it has little spaces for uh, how big the boxes are on uh, both the A5 and B6 size calendars. They, they also have little um, uh, planner, like uh, event uh, size shapes. I don't know what else to call them. So you can put them in your actual uh, lineup on your weekly calendar. Um, and also I use these little arrows and uh, the, I don't know what you call the ones with no arrows, but just the flat pieces. I use all of these pretty regularly. Probably the only thing I'm not really using on here is this little squiggly line down here. I mean, I suppose you could use that for decorative things and whatever. And what's nice about this too is it has a little ruler in addition. Um, it's just an all round really useful tool. And you can also uh, do a scalloped edge here. Uh, so as far as planner stencils go, for me, this is the most useful one. Now, you know, you may do different things with your planner and need different things out of a stencil, but for me, this is the one I use the most and it's the most useful. And uh, so with these things, so I, the only sort of decorative thing that I do in my planner uh, and sometimes in my uh, bullet journal is I will put some washi tape down. And sometimes I'll pick some sort of seasonal washi tape to like put along the side of a monthly spread, for example. Uh, this just happens to be the one I currently have out on my desk. I will rotate these seasonally. Um, and then it, I have this little um, washi tape cutter, which is really super useful. I will show you how that works. Um, I'm just gonna take a little piece of the washi tape and then, okay, so let's say we want to go like with this flower. There you go. 
perfect little square of washi. It's, it's really, really nice to have this little cutter on there. They come in a variety of sizes. I think I got the larger size, but they, the larger size will fit around any washi tape. Um, but I find that a lot more useful than having, having to tear it. And this is a little more accurate, especially if you have little designs like this one um, on your washi tape and you want to delineate between designs on your washi tape. This is really great, and I'll put a link to that as well. As far as washi tape goes, I'm not gonna put a link to anything because you can get washi tape just about everywhere, and there's so many different options. Um, so I'll just let you, <laughs> if you want some washi tape, I would say go ahead and look for that yourself. I'm gonna put this little thing here on the table for the time being. Okay, so, and if I ever have to attach anything into my planner or my uh, bullet journal, which I have to say does not happen very often. Um, I, I actually am more often using this kind of thing at work uh, because if I have sort of a note that wasn't on a sticky note or something and I want to permanently put it in my work journal, I will uh, run a little bit of this Tombow Mono Permanent Adhesive to the top and then stick it in there so that I have it in there permanently. I just have two of these. They're, they're both by Tombow. Um, this one is sort of the standard size that you'll find just about everywhere. This one I keep at home. This one I travel with. Um, depending on my setup, you know, I have it in different places. I did want to show you the, um, the little pouch that I use at home to store things. So I actually store my stamp pads and my um, correction tape, which I'll show you here in a second and my uh, adhesive strips. I, I store all of that in this Smart Fit Lilac Labs um, little case here that has sort of a flanged bottom so you can have more in here. I'm gonna open this up in a minute, but I wanted to show you this last thing before going on to the pens and then I'll show you how all that stuff fits in there. So this is the Tombow Mono Correction Tape and I will uh, use this pretty often if I ever have a mistake. Sometimes I'll just leave mistakes crossed out or something like that, but if it's something that's either glaring or distracts or something, I will put this over and it works really, really well. Let me see if I can um, find, okay, I'm just gonna do the back of this card here. So let's say that, because this is not an erasable pen, let's just say I had completely messed something up on um, my calendar this and and this so this one has it on the bottom so you would drag it across like that and then this one has it on the side so you would drag it across like that oops <laughs> sometimes these get a little wonky and then you have to um, advance the uh, little loopy part but you want to make sure okay so and that one might be a little off now that was a terrible example. This normally works much better than that. There you go. That shows you how well it works. <laughs> um, so these come in a variety of sizes. I think these are the same kind of tape. They uh, are both by Tombow. You know, pick whichever one you think works better. Uh, this one I've had some trouble with just because I think in the container it actually shifts the tape itself sideways. So it comes out this way and then it shifts to the side. And I think sometimes that adds to problems with it coming off this little rail here, um, which as you saw, but, uh, but either one will work well. It just depends on what size you want. And generally when I have little extra bits like this, I will just rub them off and then everything will sit flat. Um, and you can write over these. You probably can't even see that very well with the correction tape because it's white on white, but you can write over it, but it's gonna look a little different than when you originally wrote on the paper. As you can see, well, maybe you can't see, but it, it to me, it looks a little darker than the original writing on the paper. So it's gonna look different. So just something to note. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you how I keep things in this little guy, and then I will talk about the pens. So, um, so this little pouch opens up like this, and I actually already have a few tools. This I keep at home, and then I have this smaller correction tape in one of the pockets. I have this uh, permanent adhesive just kind of thrown in here, and then I also keep the archival ink um, 
pad in there and then I keep these little ones in there too. This thing holds a lot. Um, you just kind of put it down in there and then you zip it up and you're good to go. It holds a ton. And I like that because I can keep pretty much most of my planner stuff together. And um, it's really super sturdy. Um, I love most of the Lilat Labs uh, cases. They're, they're, they're really great, you know, standard pen cases and that sort of thing. So I just wanted to show you how I kept all that in there. Um, this one I keep in my desk drawer, which I'm gonna go ahead and put away now. This one I keep um, in a, you know, however I'm traveling, I'll usually stick it in a little pocket or something because it's pretty portable. And uh, actually, yeah, well, I'll deal with that later. So let me get this washi tape up and I'm gonna put that on the back of this card as well. And I'm also gonna take these little stamps, which I just keep on my desk in that little holder. And then I reach for them whenever I need them. Usually I will stamp things a little bit at a time just so that uh, I don't have to come in every single day and do that. So now let's talk pens. And this is where I'm gonna give you a little bit of a sneak peek of my 2021 setups, both for work and home. So for this year, for 2020, I've been using this Pentel Philography pen. And this I purchased from Yoseka Stationery. It's a great pen, and you saw me writing with it just now. It's uh, it come it it accommodates a variety of refills and uh, in a variety of colors and the pen itself just feels really solid and it's it's not too thick not too thin it is slightly heavy um, I kind of like the feel of a pretty sus substantial pen as far as weight goes I don't like something super duper light but uh, but this is a great all around pen and I highly recommend it. And I'll tell you the only reason why I am moving away from it for 2021, at least at the beginning. Um, this is still a favorite, but what I'm going to be doing is moving towards um, friction erasable pens for 2021. So this is the one I'm gonna be using in my personal planner. And this is sort of the, uh, you know, maybe sort of the office, version equivalent of, of this one <laughs> here. It's a it's significantly heavier than the average uh, friction pen. Um, and it has the little eraser here underneath a little screw top. I forget the model number on this one. I'll look it up and uh, put a link down below. Uh, but it has the, the clicker mechanism there. You can put a variety of line weights for friction. Uh, refills in here and obviously a ver variety of colors. This one happens to be a similar color to my regular pen. Okay, so so this is also kind of demonstrating my issue with this pen, which is sometimes it'll have, this is kind of my issue with ballpoint pens generally. Sometimes you'll have what, what I guess we can call railroading. Um, this also, th I have a pretty large, um, I think I have a 0.7 refill in here and it takes a little while to dry so basically I have been putting a piece of paper in between so this will dry um, and you might even be able to see if I try to erase no it dried fairly fast but sometimes on my planner paper it will um, not really dry and then when I go to erase it it'll just kind of smudge it so the only thing with this one is I have to keep track of that little cap at the end hopefully Hopefully it'll survive. So this one is going to be in my personal planner and I'm just gonna show you the outside. So this is a speckled fonds and it's sort of a special configuration. So I'm just gonna have this be a sneak peek of this top here. I'm gonna do a separate flip through of this at some point later, but I did wanna show you the pens. So, um, so I am gonna be including this friction pen up here. And the reason why I'm switching is that I <laughs> was making so many mistakes, uh, especially lately since I've had to cancel so many things and I would have it on my calendar and then my whole calendar would be full of like things that are scratched out. So, um, so this year, <laughs> or for 2021, I'm hoping at least at the beginning of the year, I'm gonna be using this friction erasable pen so that I can go through 
and erase things instead of crossing them out if I have to reschedule and that sort of thing. So that's gonna make my planner look a little bit more neat. And here I have a new, well not new, but a fountain pen from my stash that I'm going to be using at least at the beginning of the year, um, which is this Pilot Pro Gear Mini that I'm gonna be using for bullet journaling and collections in here, which all will be revealed when I do the flip through. And then I also have in here, I don't use highlighters very much, but I decided to go ahead and add a highlighter here and see how I feel about it. This is a friction highlighter, so it is erasable, um, and it has an eraser here at the end. Here, let me go ahead and show you that. Um, it's in gray. Um, it's just the color that I happen to have in this erasable pen. So I'm just gonna try it out, see if I like it, and I might add some other colors or a different color, because I don't wanna I don't want a whole bunch of stuff in here. Like these three pens, that'll be plenty for my personal planner use. Okay, so that's all you're gonna see of this. And now, uh, and I'm gonna put this in back in my current everyday carry, and I'm definitely gonna come back to this, because this is one of my favorites. So uh, the one that I'm using for work is just, you know, a run-of-the-mill friction ball clicker uh, 07. And this is in a dark blue. <laughs> again, you, I think it might also be this paper, which tends to have that effect. Um, again, the, the eraser is just out in the open on this one, which is kind of convenient. Um, and then I will show you another sneak peek. I'm going to show you a sneak peek of my um, 2021 work planner. So I had my work planner in an A6 before, and I am switching to a B6 Slim, and I am gonna be using a Jaboon Techo Biz in here, and then I'm going to be using this friction clicker pen for both notes and my calendar. I have already been using this pen for just my notes because I wasn't using a set calendar for work before. Um, and it's been working really great. And, and the reason why I was using a, an erasable pen for my work notes, and then it has this little lame sticker that I haven't completely taken off because it has sticky stuff underneath. But anyway, it, it's been used as you can see. This is refillable, so I, at least I think it is. Maybe it's not. Actually, it might not be refillable. I might have to get another one when this runs out. But uh, when I take work notes, I tend to be kind of messy and I do a lot of crossing out there too. But the fact that I can erase it is really nice. Or if I get a date wrong when someone says something to me, that sort of thing, um, it's really nice to just be able to erase it rather than cross it out and have a bunch of messy work notes. So this one is going to go in here. I'm gonna put the elastic around that. This I'm gonna do a flip through as well in the near future. I don't want to um, do a flip through once I've really started using it because I don't um, want to show a lot of my work notes and stuff. So I'm gonna show it as a sort of a almost blank setup and that is to come as well. So, um, so that's pretty much it. I did have one last thing that I wanted to show you and I may or may not have shown this on the channel before, I can't remember. So this is a little pen pouch by Buku, and I talked a lot about refills for different pens, like the um, fancier version of the Friction, which I know is refillable. I, that one I just showed you may not be. Um, and then this one is refillable as well, this Pentel Philog Philography, I think that's how you say it. Um, so I keep all of my refills in here. I keep refills for all of my pens, and then I also keep, um, some refills, well actually I keep converters for fountain pens in here as well. I keep my cartridges somewhere else, but this is all refills and converters for both ballpoint or you know gel pens and fountain pens. And it keeps it really well. And this this I I've kinda I kind of started a while back and thought, oh well I'll shift it if it's not working out. But then I just know I have all of my refills in one place and I know where to go. For those. Um, so this is a great little pouch and I'm pretty sure that these are constantly stocked, at least this shape and size are pretty much in constant stock on Buku's website. Uh, you're, none, none of them are going to look the same. They're all going to be different because they're individually printed fabric, hand printed fabric, um, and all that sort of thing. But I really, really love her and I love her shop. And she's based out of Canada, so again, shipping might be a little high 
right now uh, for that. I just purchased something off of her website and it, and it didn't seem exorbitantly high, uh, certainly not as exorbitantly high as the shipping from Japan, but I, it did seem a little higher than normal. So just an FYI, and uh, I think that's it. I think that's all I wanted to show you today. So feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I still have in the planning a uh, mixed media favorites video, and I'll probably do, go back around and do watercolors and fountain pens. Those tend to, those two categories tend to have the most flux of where I'm finding new products and, and all of a sudden something new is my favorite. Um, mixed media supplies seems to be more static. So, but I do have to gather a bunch of supplies. So that's just why it has taken me a little while to get to that one, but that is in the running. That's gonna come out soon. And uh, I think that's it. So I hope to see you next time. And in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much, bye.